Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel for those of you who are new here. My name is Kaylee and this is Foodie Friday. Before we get into this week's episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload. So this week I'm really excited. I'm getting back into my baking roots where I create healthier versions of unhealthy things. That's one of my favorite things to do here at Measure Me Whole is to recreate foods that are not the best for you and try to give them a healthier twist. So today we are going to be making one of my summertime favorite desserts and that is strawberry shortcake. I'm not sure what your version of strawberry shortcake is, but usually I think of my mom's homemade version where she makes these really delicious dense shortcake biscuit cake thingies and then she slices them in half, puts you know a big dollop of Cool Whip in the middle and then puts the top on and then douses it in sugary strawberry syrup. And that is so delicious, I love that. But it's not necessarily the healthiest thing for you. So I'm going to kind of clean this recipe up a little bit, use healthier ingredients and create a super delicious, healthier version to one of my favorite summertime treats. So this recipe is not only made with healthier ingredients that you can feel good about eating, but I also created it to be super versatile, meaning you can make this into a cake, slice it up and serve it that way, traditional shortcake style, or you can take this on the go. So today we're gonna be making the version where you can take this on the go. During the recipe, I'll kind of chat through what to do and the steps to take if you would prefer to eat it in a cake form, but I am going to show you how to make strawberry shortcake in a jar so you can take these with you to a backyard party. You can have them as fun little individual desserts for your friends during the summertime, or you can pack them up as a family and take them with you to the beach. That's something that we love to do. Like I said, not only was this recipe created with healthier ingredients so you can eat it and not worry while you watch your waistline, but it's also made to be paleo friendly, gluten free, nut free. And I've also included some other dietary swaps for my friends who are vegan, stuff like that. So you can catch that in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get into baking. All right, friends, so the first step to our shortcake is to make the shortcake part. That takes the longest. So we're gonna be using one half cup of coconut flour. We're also going to be using a half a teaspoon of baking soda as well as one fourth teaspoon of salt. That's our dry ingredient. So we're gonna just lightly whisk these together to incorporate our salt and baking soda with our coconut flour. And then we're gonna add in our wet ingredient. So for our wet ingredients, we're using one half cup of pure maple syrup. We also are gonna be using one half cup of softened coconut oil. It doesn't matter if you use refined or unrefined. If you use refined, it will take out that coconutty flavor so if that's something you want to avoid feel free to do that and then we have two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice this is going to give a very light fresh flavor it's not going to give a whole lot of lemon flavor to the cake but it really adds a special touch of zest to your cake so once you get all these ingredients together you're going to go ahead and start whisking your cake batter so coconut flour is very thick it's very absorbent so you are going to be getting a very thick dense cake batter but we're going to do something here in just a second to keep the cake light and fluffy um, so it's not gonna be angel cake consistency but it'll be more of like a hybrid between angel food cake and those shortbread biscuits that my mom used to make so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using five eggs we're gonna separate our yolks um, and our whites and we're going to whisk our whites together in order to give this cake some fluff and light airiness so we're gonna just be separating our yolks from our whites but we're gonna be using a whole egg and you will take a hand mixer and whisk these until light and fluffy. You'll know they're ready when you get light fluffy egg whites with some peaks whenever you pull your whisks out just like this. So once you have your egg whites ready, you're going to go ahead and take those yolks and incorporate them into your batter. Like I said, coconut flour is very absorbent so this might take some work, but once you get those yolks incorporated, you're going to take your egg whites that we just fluffed and you will lightly fold these in. This takes some time. I actually sped the footage up just because it took me a couple of minutes, but you'll add all of your egg whites in. You can do this a little bit at a time, but you just will slowly incorporate in these egg whites into your cake batter. So this, like I said, will still be thick, but when you bake this, this will allow for a really nice, light, airy uh, sponge cake to come out of your oven. So once you have all that mixed together, we're gonna put this in an eight by eight baking dish. Be sure to grease this really well. You'll see later on in the footage, my cake kind of stuck to the bottom of my dish. I wish I had some parchment paper to line this with. So if you do have parchment paper, I would highly suggest lining your uh, baking pan with this just because this is such a light and fluffy cake that when you pull it out, um, if, you, if it sticks, it will ruin the bottom of your cake. So once you get this in your eight by eight baking, 
baking dish, you're gonna bake this in your oven at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until the center comes out cool. Be sure to not over bake this um, because then you'll have a super dry cake. While our cake is baking, we're going to make our strawberries. So for this recipe, we're just using fresh strawberries. It's really that simple. You don't need to add any additional sweetness to this. The cake is sweet enough. So what we're gonna be doing is just cutting up our strawberries. You can cut these into cubes. I like to quarter my strawberries because I like a nice hearty strawberry in my strawberry shortcake. Um, but either way, you're just going to rinse off your strawberries, cut them how you like them. And then what's really great is you can save the strawberry tops. Don't throw these away. And you can use them to infuse teas. You can infuse your water with them you can infuse vinegar or syrups but don't throw your tops away there's so many great purposes so I've even linked some different articles below that you can look at and see what all you can use your strawberry tops for but we're gonna set these aside and make our coconut whipped cream so this is really easy you're just gonna be using two cans of full fat coconut milk and you're just gonna be scooping out the top of that full fat coconut so I would suggest putting your coconut milk in the refrigerator this will allow the coconut water to separate from the coconut fat and you'll scoop out that coconut fat, the white part, and use that to make your coconut cream. Another pro tip is to put your bowl in the freezer for about an hour before making this. You can see this takes some time to whip up. A cold bowl will just help make this process faster, but we're adding one tablespoon of paleo powdered sugar. I've linked the full recipe below on how to make that in the description box, and then we're going to whisk this until light and fluffy. This does take some time, so be patient with it. Let me be the example of what not to do. Be sure to use parchment paper when making this cake. I promise you it makes everything so much better. Mine ended up sticking to the pan, so that's why it didn't come out as pretty. It still tastes just as delicious. It just unfortunately stuck. Like I stated before, this is a super versatile recipe. You can serve this up like traditional strawberry shortcake, where you slice the cake in half, add the Cool Whip topping and the strawberries on top, or you can have a little fun with it and make this into single serving sizes. So that's what we're doing here. So I cubed my cake up into about 24 slices. I kind of crumble my pieces in the bottom just to help get a smoother layer. And then we're gonna take that coconut whipped cream. We're going to put this on top. I like to call this rustic. I am not Martha Stewart. This is not going to turn out super duper pretty, but it's going to taste delicious. And then once you get that coconut whipped cream on top, you're going to add your strawberries and you'll repeat this process until you have about two or three layers per mason jar. Um, I would like to note that I use 16 ounce mason jars. So these are about two servings per mason jar. If you have eight ounce mason jars, that would probably be better because then you can really get in there and make the layers nice and smooth. Plus it's one single serving. So it's easier to serve this up. But but either way, try not to get your mason jar too full so that way you can still put the mason jar lids on top. So Brad and I are gonna test taste these out, so here we go. You have to be honest. That was really good. Yeah, it tastes great. Good job. Thanks. Good job. So Brad and I ended up devouring the rest of our desserts off camera. It was so good. Oh my goodness. So I would like to note that I used 16 ounce mason jars for this recipe video today. Next time I would probably like to use eight ounce jars. That seems to be a better portion. I only ate half of mine and then Brad ended up eating the rest just because it was a lot. Typically when doing a serving size recipe, I would use smaller mason jars. Unfortunately, my smaller mason jars got broken in one of our moves across the country. So I only had 16 ounce mason jars. So technically one mason jar was about two serving sizes. I've made a note of this in the full blog post that you can get the link to in the description box. Normally, if I had the right size mason jar, this would make around eight to 10 single serving dishes. But no matter which way you serve it up, this is a super delicious recipe to have on hand this summer. As always, if you enjoyed this recipe, please give this video a like, as well as subscribe to my channel so you never miss an upload. If you'd like to follow my everyday life, you can always follow me on Instagram for more frequent updates, nutrition tips, things like that. And I also have a postpartum journey vlog that drops every other Wednesday. If you're new to the Measure Me Whole community, be sure to leave a comment below so I can say hi. All right, friends, I think that wraps everything up. As always, I look forward to getting together next week where we cook another nutritious and delicious dish. All right, you guys, see you next time.